My name is Juhani Siivinen, and I'm working as a sales manager for Telecom at Eltec Power in Finland. I wish you all, exhibition visitors, and you who are watching this on web, warmly welcome to this product launching event. speaking audience uh, basically uh, this is the key word for today and this reflects Eltec as a company for, for four decades ten years ago uh, we were the first to, to, to launch uh, this form factor in the power industry it more than doubled the power density it had a tremendous impact on the way systems were built uh, some years later we were the first in the industry to launch a high efficient uh, power modules we lifted the standard and we set the gold standard. And that is what we strive to do. Also today. So in this uh, industry we are in, with a lot of players and a lot of uh, innovative uh, companies around the world, there's always a race. There's always some tech performance that we're all measured on. For our industry and specifically, it's been density, get the power module smaller, and efficiency. Stop wasting power. And that has been the fight between all the players for many years, and we've been climbing this ladder until someone like Eltec takes a giant quantum leap. And we've done that many times over. And by doing that, we have grown from being a local company out of Norway to be the global leader within power conversion. But when you only look at uh, these kind of metrics, like density and efficiency, you can keep on climbing and climbing and climbing that ladder, but it comes to an end. There is a theor theoretical end for it, but there is a practical end to it, which is even lower. Because as you approach the theoretical limit for, say, density or efficiency, it comes at a very, very high cost. So after a while, it's not worth it anymore. So what do you do then? This graph can also be shown as kind of the continuous improvement graph, which is also denominated like this in the school books, the S-curve. Something new comes along, it has a rapid uh, uh, change of the industry, and it stagnates. So what can we as a company do to stay competitive, stay innovative, and drive the industry forward? We make a new curve. We launch disruptive innovation, and that's why we're here today. Because for us, it's not only about winning the race. Obviously, we will always be in the lead when it comes to these metrics. But we also want to change the game. And that's why we are launching this product today. Somewhere up the line, the staircase stops. It's not worth jumping over. So today, we're going to put a drop in the ocean, which is a start of something new and something great. Here she is, and she's going to be revealed today. So instead of talking, I will show. And we'll do that with a fantastic video that tells the story behind how we came to this point today. Since the start of LTech in the early 70s, it's always been about making something great. A lot of people in the industry have thought great thoughts, but we, we have made them reality. It's always our strategy to be the technology leader, meaning high efficiency, high density, reliable products. It's also to develop new and unique abilities. It started with a project to design an inverter for a telecom system. Designing an inverter is a technical challenge in itself, but we were also uh, required to design with high efficiency. The key for high efficiency is to use resonant topologies. So we decided to go for a resonant DC-DC converter inside the inverter. Naturally, we looked at the high efficiency technology used by LTEC in the Flapback 2 rectifiers. That turned out to be a rather complex design in itself because in an inverter the power flow is in the reverse direction compared with the rectifier. Well, I remember so well when uh, Roberto Rojas came to me and said, uh, 
look, I, I have this crazy idea. Yeah, we, we discussed uh, his idea and, and uh, Roberto explained to me how, what, 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 why he thought it would work. We immediately saw that uh, the, this type of, of uh, technical solution would have a, a great potential um, because we, we would replace three modules with one, basically. We uh, tried his ideas uh, in the lab and it worked fine. It was suddenly possible to integrate a rectifier and an inverter in the same box. And in addition, we could also um, include a connection AC to AC. Suddenly now we, we have one box that could feed both AC and DC load at the same time. Of course, that was a, a kind of revolution for me. To have this integrated into one box and minimize the number of transistors and still achieve uh, bipolar power flow. That is a very good achievement. And that uh, to keep the low losses is a huge challenge in, the, in this opposite direction. So our stellar engineers made a crazy idea into a powerful reality. A bi-directional, three-in-one solution. But the solution to what? What difference will this make in the world of power? When we saw the abilities of these new products, we started to think that now there are endless opportunities for new applications of this rectiverter. So then we started in a strategic way to, to map out all the different segments and the applications where this one could be used. In the past, maybe the customer have run the UPS, uh, UPSs. They have a 230 volt AC output and they are feeding, for instance, uh, rectifiers, 48 volt rectifiers with that power. Instead, now we have the 48 volt directly output, so you don't need to go through the, the 230 uh, output. It's also modular in this uh, transfer technology from DC to AC feed, which means that uh, this transfer is also in redundancy. It's not a kind of static switch that could be a single point to failure. When uh, investing into uh, systems like this, uh, usually you have invested in a rectifier system and an inverter system with probably from two different supplier with different controllers. Now you have it in one box with a much simpler solution. One controller. So of course your cost of ownership will be reduced. We are entering now a new era in the power conversion industry. It's a game changer within our field. It, it's a new type of power supply. This is just the start of a new architecture. I, I am enthusiastic about the Rectivator and it is um, based on the valuable know-how of Eltec used in a new setting. It's, it's not a coincidence that uh, Eltec was the inventor of this new technology. Well, I, I don't think other companies uh, uh, thought about this idea even. The use of this product is of course tremendous and uh, there are maybe applications that we don't even know about. Which we may not think about today but can be uh, realized tomorrow. We have changed the name of the game again and again. In 2002, in 2005, in 2008 and in 2013. The only game we play is being ahead of the game and we love it. So there she is. The rectiverter, it's not an inverter, it's not a rectifier, it's a rectiverter. But at the same time, it actually is a rectifier and an inverter too. So let's do it this together here. You can touch and feel it, and you can be amongst the first in the world to, to, to actually hold it in your hands. As uh, Gunnar said so well in the video, uh, customers wanting dual feed dual output systems, normally needed to buy inverter systems and rectifier <laughs> systems, and stage them together with engineering and so forth. Now you get all of it in one box. Three ports, everything is inside here. Uh, 
and it of course stays and plays along with the same gold standard form factor that LTEC has established in the market. Same size, fits straight into the same racks, and it's, uh, how to say, the new building block of this world of power conversion. So why is this launch and this module such a big thing for LTEC? It's a big thing because we truly believe that we can change the world with our technology. We've done it before, and we're never going to stop doing it again and again. We did it with the HE, when we, more than, uh, when we removed more than half of the waste in power. Of course, that was a tremendous innovation business-wise for LTEC. But more importantly, it does something with the world. This is, this is a tracker we have on our website. Since we launched this in, in 2008, the fact that the industry has gone from lower efficiency to higher efficiency has saved more than 2 million metric tons of CO2 emissions. That is something we are incredibly proud of. And that drive is what, is what you're going to see when you see this logo. That is what stands behind this company. And why do we uh, think that innovations that really makes a difference is so important? Well, because that is what takes us forward. That is what brings us to the future. That is, that is what actually brings change. Keeps us growing. That is what challenges the status quo. That challenges the industry. And not least, challenges competition. Because after all, in technology, there's always competition. And we are here to win it to win over our competition, but also winning over the impossible and making the impossible possible. The first time someone had the idea behind the, the, the core breakthrough here, it was really a crazy idea. Impossible was words that were used. It's here now today, and we're very proud of it. Because that is what we need to do to improve the industry and the ecosystem around LTEC and everyone in uh, the power conversion world. So what is truly, really so great about the Rectiverter? Well, inventions that can make stuff redundant are extremely powerful. To explain that, I have a small example. I guess many of you or all of you remember this. This was the Nokia 3310. It was a fantastic phone. Swept the global market. Super button for high, uh, high speed SMSing. Came in 2000, December 2000. Back then, if people needed to find their way around, they had to have a GPS. Back then, people actually had paper calendars. They had calculators, they watched TV listened to the radio, they had credit cards, they had voice recorders, they had cameras, they wanted mag lights for Christmas, they had clock alarms and discmans. They even needed to have a computer to get connectivity to the internet. Back then, people actually had phones too. So during that short span of history, from 2000 until today, a lot of things have happened. One of the things is that this came along, the smartphone, and made pretty much all of these industries redundant. Of course, if you're a professional photographer, you want to buy a professional camera, but for you and me, the phone does everything we need. So seen from the other industries, this, the rise of the smartphone is like a black hole of potential customers. So innovations, excellent innovations that carries this, the make redundant genome, comes with high gravity or gravity of high magnitude. And with that, I mean such innovations, they change our thinking. Maybe more importantly, they change our habits. And that is what takes us into the future. As Gunnar said so well in the video, we know exactly how powerful this is, but we still don't know how powerful that's yet to be realized in our ecosystem. So what does it really do? 
And to explain that, we need to take a step back. Actually, we need to go one century back when there was what they call the war of currents between Edison and Tesla, AC or DC. I think they fought, they never agreed, and they died, and the world split in two. You have an AC industry and you have a DC industry. There are pros and cons with both types of transferring power. So since then, you've had like people who have preferred the wavy way, AC, and people who have preferred the straight way, DC. And you have different industries preferring one or the other. With this, LTEC is saying, you don't need to fight anymore. We give you power both ways, from the same module, from the same uh, power conversion box. And that is quite powerful. But not least, as we showed in the video, this, the birth of the REC diverter has made two full layers of an infrastructure redundant. As I said before, previously we used to make inverter systems and rectifier systems for our customers. We don't need that anymore because we have it all in one. So a week ago, before this launch, we officially put these modules into the museum of LTEC. And it's proud they've served their, served their times many, many years over. And the reason we were able to achieve that is this fact, which comes from Niels's team, uh, the core R&D team. They were able to control bi-directional power flow. Power conversion boxes up until now has been unidirectional. Goes in one side, goes out the other. And the fact that we cracked that code many years ago and now industrialized it is going to make a lot of stuff redundant. People just... <laughs>
how it's working. We have seen part of it now, but more in details. Uh, I will also show a little bit what we are launching today, uh, except the modules. We are also, of course, launching complete systems. And also a little bit about the applications, uh, where it can be used. And uh, as we said in the movie, there are a lot of opportunities here, so I will try to guide it through as well. So uh, you have to learn this new symbol that will change the world of power conversion uh, with these three ports, uh, where you have an AC input, an AC output, and then a DC input and output, which is then bidirectional. So what can we use this for then? Um, of course, it could be used as an ordinary rectifier. Uh, we can just uh, disable uh, the AC output and use this as a standard rectifier. It could be, let's say, if you have only a DC load at the moment, but you know in a couple of years you will have an, some AC load, then you just enable the AC output and suddenly you have a three-port output there. It can, of course, also be used as a standard inverter. You don't need to connect the AC input if you don't want to. And then you, the DC input, and you have a, a, an AC output as a standard inverter. If you want to, you can use it as an AC conditioner. If you have some disturbance on the input, and you want to have a stable out AC output, that's also a possibility, of course. So you see there's a lot of options how this module can be used. But of course, the, 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 I think the... The main use of this is, of course, where you connect AC and you have both an AC and DC output. That will be the, the biggest use for this unit, of course. So just to look into how the systems are built up today, if we have a kind of rectifier inverter system, we, this is with a combination of DC and AC output, then... Uh, you have a rectifier uh, then feeding your battery and your DC load, and at the same time feeding uh, your inverter. Uh, at the output, there could be uh, this uh, static transfer switch. It's not always there, but when it's there, it's uh, used for if you have an overload on the, on the output, if you have a short on the output and you want to trip some fuses then you can use the static switch to switch to mains when the mains are available, of course. So uh, that's important to understand also. So what are we doing now? We are making two of those three components redundant, as we said. We have now the rectiverter. Uh, modularity, uh, including, of course, a rectifier, including an inverter, but also including the feature about overload and uh, this uh, transfer technology and tripping possibilities of fuses. So uh, when we feed the rectiverter from, from main stand, then we will have a each module will have a 1200 watt AC output and a 1200 watt DC output. It's not 100% truth because in uh, total there is 2000 watt where AC always have a priority. So if you have, for instance, 1000 watt power on AC, then you get 1000 watt on DC. And then, next part that we talked about, this is the bidirectional. I will go back and forth. So this is happening if you lose the AC power. You have a seamless transfer where the DC uh, is, uh, flows, switches. And of course, there is a seamless transfer, so you will not see any, any interruption on the AC output. And there you will have, of course, a 1200 watt uh, AC output on that. 
But of course, we, we are not. This is a great uh, module. Thank you, Nils, for that. But uh, we need something around the module. We need we need some systems. We need some controller functions. Uh, we need some uh, AC and DC uh, distributions. So uh, we have. We are also launching today three different power core building blocks that can be used to put into indoor and outdoor systems. And uh, these are both for industrial and telecom. There are some difference in, in the telecom and industrial power cores. Uh, uh, this, we have one 6 kVA for telecom, one for industri more into industrial, where the 18 kVA three-phase power core it uh, could be used in both uh, telecom and industrial applications. Uh, can, I will not go so much into details. You can look in, uh, it will be launched now on, on our web, uh, and you can also look it up in our stand afterwards. There, have, there are some different features regarding manual bypass switches, uh, uh, AC and DC distributions, and, and so on. So these are building blocks built in our indoor and outdoor uh, systems. But we don't, let's say, the power core we, we, we think about as an inverter system, but uh, we, we don't forget then that this is a total output of 8 kVA or 24, uh, sorry, kilowatt, uh, where you have a DC and AC output, if you want to. So, a little bit about applications and some customer cases that we are looking into. Um, I think Nils will talk a little bit more about the future, but uh, this is some, some examples. and. Uh, we can start with, for instance, remote radio head, where you today have maybe a 48 volt feed to these radio heads up in this mast, and you have some 48 volt com uh, other uh, equipment on the ground. That could probably be feed 48 volt on the ground and then feed 230 to these radio heads. And of course, there would be a lot of uh, less voltage drop for that and easier to, to install. Combined telecom system, where you, have, where you are used to put in an inverter system, then you replace that with, with the rect inverter system. You have a 48 volt output and AC at the same time. We are looking also into, uh, into uh, UPSs, uh, marine applications, where we are, they are looking for redundancy, modular systems. Uh, this level crossing, it's a good example where the customer is looking for a long backup time of uh, the batteries. Uh, let's say uh, these small UPSs usually are, have a very small built-in rectifier and a small battery of maybe 10-15 minutes uh, backup time. And if you want to have long backup time, maybe up to 8-10 hours, you cannot recharge those batteries with the built-in rectifier in that UPS. So uh, what you need to do then is to add a rectifier in parallel to that uh, UPS with the rectiverter as it has a very large uh, rectifier built in. could easily recharge big batteries up to 8 to 10 hours backup time. In signaling system, we can also replace UPS system and, and feed other voltages with the rectiverter, so have a backup uh, 230 to feed, for instance, a rectifier with. I think Nils will guide you into some, some more applications, so I will leave the word to Nils. Thank you, Gunnar. I will talk a little bit more about this uh, fantastic uh, product, but I will also talk about the fantastic organization behind it. So when I came to Eltec now more than 12 years ago, I met a friendly, open-minded culture and an organization 
with people passionately dedicated to power electronics and power products. It's been a pleasure for me to, to work together with this, these people and uh, participate in the growth of the organization to become complete. Complete in the sense that it's able to master the whole process from the first idea to the final product in the hands of the customer. So new, any new product development uh, needs an innovative culture to be successful. And um, every step in uh, the process, in this process, is um, managed in the spirit of Eltec's core values. And these core values are reflecting the spirit of the founder of Eltec back in the, the 70s. And these are customer-centric, culturally sensitive, and environmental conscious, aggressively, fearless, competitive. I rephrased it a little bit there. Uh, but for me, being an R&D person, maybe this one is the most important one, technology ambitious. Eltec um, has also an, um, an ambition to um, uh, yes, um, any new uh, product development uh, needs to be uh, governed by a determined uh, management with visions and um, long-term commitment for uh, these complex design and development tasks that we see in our business. And I think Eltec has this kind of a leadership. Uh, Eltec has an ambition to provide a, 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 a attractive, an attractive environment, not only for power electronics specialists, but also for specialists in uh, software design, such as um, uh, embedded software, digital signal processing, control software. And we have also um, experts in uh, production technique and uh, sourcing of components. Equally important is testing. We have a specialized testing department for um, production testing. Another department is focusing on uh, certification testing and validation testing. And not to forget our sales offices. We have uh, sales offices in more than 100 countries all over the world. And the, uh, our experts and uh, experienced uh, people from industry face our customers and uh, discuss with them. And in this interaction with our customers, we uh, get the most interesting problems to solve. So, so guided by the wisdom of our customers, we uh, see the possibilities to uh, develop and uh, pr produce what the uh, what the public and the society needs. Eltec is determined to, to continue our journey uh, to, towards a greener world. We started 10 years ago by introducing the high efficiency products, the, the HE rectifiers. And we will continue to take our responsibility to create technical solutions that will facilitate the ongoing conversion conversion uh, to uh, renewable energy sources that we need so much. So now back to the uh, Rectiverter. Uh, this module is, uh, the first application for this module would be to build uh, uh, modular, scalable AC UPSs, as uh, Gunnar talked about. And uh, the DC port is uh, now intended for 48 volt systems. But uh, coming soon uh, are the uh, 110, 220, and 380 volt versions. And they will all serve different industrial application areas. Um, 
the director were to make sense in any application uh, where we have uh, batteries for energy stories, storage. Um, uh, if you look beyond the classical UPS uh, uh, application, we see that bidirectional uh, converters play an important role for energy storage in smart grid systems. Think about uh, a microgrid with the built with the rectiverter systems and uh, add uh, uh, solar, for example, as we see on this um, picture, a solar uh, converter injecting uh, solar energy to the DC port. We can also uh, think about uh, injecting uh, solar energy to any one of the two AC ports. So we have uh, three possible connection points and uh, which one we choose would be um, based on where the energy is utilized the best. Another application that we may think about is uh, powering critical loads in, in buildings like uh, data centers, uh, hospitals, banks or why not resi residential homes or even uh, shopping centers, shopping malls. Uh, for, for this kind of uh, electrical distribution, uh, the balanced three-phase is the preferred uh, way of uh, distributing the energy. It's the most efficient and the most commonly used way of distributing electrical energy. And uh, the rectiverter is perfectly well suited for three-phase operation. So if one of the input phases is gone, then the rectiverter system will still supply power to all the outgoing uh, three phases connected to the uh, uh, critical loads. Yet another ap uh, application could be supporting a, a weak grid. So if we have a, a, a high power demand locally, we can uh, let the uh, ba batteries in the rectiverter system supply the high power for a short time, while the connection from, from the grid is only supplying uh, an average of power over a certain time of period. So uh, finally, I would like to say something about the scalability uh, of, of systems. Uh, to the right, we see uh, the type of system we are launching today, uh, which Gunnar described. Uh, on the left, we see a system we are developing now for, for a customer. And, and as you see, the cabinet is uh, almost full of uh, cable entries and battery fuses and AC input and AC output connections. And there is a, the smaller portion of the cabinet is uh, for, for the rect rectifier and inverter system. And we can now uh, combine those two functions into the same building blocks. In the middle is a, a system. It's not for sale, I must say so. Uh, it's a 96, it's a test we are doing in our lab with um, 96 modules in the same cabinet just to make sure they work together properly. And uh, this cabinet uh, can handle almost 200 kilowatt of power or 192 kilowatt to be exact. Um, uh, but th this is uh, an experiment and, and we, I wanted to show this to just demonstrate the scalability and the possibilities we see for building larger UPS systems as well. So with that, I would like to hand over to uh, Satvir for the final remarks. Thank you, Nils. Thank you for sharing, Niels, and again, congratulations with this superb achievement. Uh, you pr proved many people wrong. Um, to wrap it up, uh, I think we've said it around, but it's a fairly new concept, so let's kind of uh, look at it uh, again. Most important thing, it's here now. Uh, you know who we are. Uh, we have a lot of passionate people who, who are dedicated to change uh, things. So reach out. Uh, more than interested in uh, discussing uh, crazy ideas, different ways of looking upon things, enable changes within your, uh, your wor world. 
You've seen this now, essentially, uh, two ports dual feed from one and same module. Uh, size is uh, beautiful. I think uh, this is one, now we can build systems that are one seventh of the size as we could previously. That's quite remarkable. Uh, but again, the most important message from today uh, should be that we cannot make this change alone. Of course, we will make this change with our customers and so forth, but it's very important that we have uh, a collaboration on that. So we are going to challenge the market continuously with new technology, but it's also important for us that you as customers challenge us, what can this box do? What should be the next module? As uh, we portrayed, there are a portfolio of products coming out, out now after this launch, different voltages and different sizes and so forth. Uh, but uh, the system applications are open enough for us to discuss. Uh, to wrap it up and have this as a hanging slide for the Q&A session, I uh, try to kind of uh, summarize. This module and the systems from it offers a three-in-one. Dual output, it's a rectifier, it's an inverter, it's a rectiverter, so you can scale it according to your needs. It's obviously smaller than what you could uh, do before, so we have pushed the density button while we were doing the other breakthroughs. It's modular and scalability, so it offers uh, scalability, so you can grow as you go. Uh, it's hot pluggable, so if you have an array of 24 of them and you want to do something with two, you can pull them out without kind of having a system falling down. It tremendously re reduces complexity from having two vendors with two different systems, two controller systems, you have one. Definitely fewer building blocks in your world. And it offers a higher reliability just with that because it's fewer components. It offers a much simpler uh, system architecture. And uh, without saying it how to say, I'm going to say it, this is obviously going to do wonders for the total cost of ownership. What you can build with this, you couldn't do before. So with that, I just open up the session for Q and A's. Mark that there is an email, there's a web page and so forth, but there's an email, rectiverter at ltech.com, so if you don't have any personal relation with anyone in LTech, this is a web place you can reach out. Solfrid will walk around with the, the microphone. Hello. Yes, thanks for the great presentation. Uh, just a small question on uh, does this have any new demands on batteries? So, uh, does this have a new... Uh, new demands for batteries. Would you like to answer that? I can take it down. Yeah. Take it down. No, no, no. Okay, uh, new demands for batteries. Yeah, of course, you can use it uh, in uh, any type of batteries because it's, it's a normal rectifier uh, that you, you charge your batteries with. So, uh, but of course, if, if you go into, let's say, uh, uh, cyclic application like the microgrids, then of course it's a challenge for, for the battery suppliers to, to have uh, good batteries for, for such applications. Otherwise, if it's a <coughs> standard uh, backup application, then you can use normal lead acid batteries or whatever you like. Thanks. Uh, can you Please describe the uh, galvanic isolation, how it's, uh, how it's isolated or, or not. Um, the galvanic isolation is uh, situated between the uh, DC port and, and the AC ports. So AC to DC and DC to AC is galvanically isolated. But remember, AC to AC is not galvanically isolated. Uh, thanks about this good presentation. Um, one question related to this um, three-phase connection. So uh, is it then generating this phase shift, shifting between AC phases? This is very important when this is supporting, for instance, AC motors. The uh, AC output will always be in synchronized to the AC input. So there will be no possible it's not intended for controlling AC motors in, in, 
by changing the frequency, if that was the question. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Uh, could you tell the date when your engineer came with a crazy idea? <laughs> Yesterday. <laughs> Actually, um, if I remember right, that was back in 2010 or something like that. So exact date is not really. Any more questions? All right, if uh, no more questions, thanks for attending. I hope you found the presentation uh, interesting. And uh, just continue talking to our people at uh, stand for today and uh, contact us uh, through this email for, for, for other people who are watching. Thanks again, and good luck with the future.